Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below. And I'll be more than glad to react to it. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel so far. Thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing. Everything that you guys do never goes unnoticed. And we're very, very grateful. And a big shout out to the person that suggested this. Um, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Fanny and Jesse, And Facebook as well, Fanny and Jesse. And just feel free to interact with us. And we'll be more than glad right back to you guys don't feel shy just say hi and we'll say hi back to you so like i said a big shout out to the person that suggested this i love reacting to this guy but i don't know his name so today we're going to be reacting to muslim merry christmas test so without wasting time let's get into the video bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh so it is that time of year again where those of us Muslims who live in the West, we live in non-Muslim countries, we are noticing that so much of the society around us are celebrating Christmas. You know, in the stores, they have Christmas music playing, they have the decorations, you have people who might literally say to you, Merry Christmas. So it's been sort of typical that yearly we find on YouTube the different clerics, different people giving da'wah amongst the Muslims, addressing certain issues related to this holiday. How should we conduct ourselves? Can we say Merry Christmas? Can we actively participate? Can we celebrate? What's the best way to go about it? So last year I recorded a video and I'll put a link in the description inshallah where I discuss a lot of these same issues but in this video I want to focus on solidifying our foundation as Muslims because so many of these issues that many of us are facing nowadays they all stem from a weak foundation, from a weak core in terms of our understanding of the religion. So inshallah, this is going to be a basic reminder, but I also hope to share some of my experiences as somebody who embraced Islam, because sometimes I hear people speaking on these topics hypothetically, but I've lived a lot of it, being somebody who embraced Islam, who comes from a Christian background, who grew up celebrating Christmas. I experienced the transition from that way of life to Islam and how I conducted myself, some of the situations I was in, some of the things that um, I went through. So I want to share that with some people that hopefully uh, can benefit, inshallah. So the first reminder to mention is the fact that this life is a test. Allah created death and life in order to test which of us are best in deeds. So as basic a concept that is, many of us seem to have forgotten that. We, we have forgotten that we are going to be tested, that we might be in situations where we might feel uncomfortable. <laughs> we can't just follow and submit to every desire we have. The religion is not something that we twist and play around with in order to cater to our desires. And the reality is, following every desire isn't good for us. Allah knows what's good for us even if we love something. Allah knows whether or not it's truly beneficial for us. There's something that we might love that's bad for us. There's something we might hate that is good for us. So let us remember what this life is all about. We are going to be resurrected in the hereafter and held accountable for how we behaved, what we did. The second point I wanted to convey is in regards to giving da'wah. If we are around people who are committing shirk, they're committing the worst of sins. They're worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're associating partners with him. This is not something that we should want for the people around us. We're not doing them a favor by facilitating them in their disobedience. Isa alayhi salam does not want anybody to worship him. So the reality of this holiday is it is misguidance upon misguidance. You have people who are worshiping Isa alayhi salam and you also have people who have even incorporated into that pagan rituals. Now, of course, people are free to make their own decisions regarding these things, and we should be respectful people. But my point is, you should want to give them da'wah, right? You should want to convey the, the truth about this holiday, about Isa alayhi salam, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are you doing living in a Western country surrounded by non-Muslims and you just do not care about them? You don't care about them being guided to the truth. You don't care about 
them being resurrected upon shirk and misguidance. So we shouldn't be disrespectful and condescending, but we also shouldn't go to the other extreme where we are encouraging something that is not going to benefit them in the hereafter. And that leads me to the third point, which is that sometimes Allah will test us through other human beings. And this is something that I really hope people will pay close attention to. Because a lot of Muslims nowadays seem to be oblivious to the fact that respect is something that is earned. People do not respect those who cower and are just begging for acceptance. People who have no dignity, no integrity, they don't stand upon anything. And people will literally test you. It's not always malicious or disrespectful. They just literally want to see if you're serious. They want to see what type of person you really are. So for example, when I first became Muslim, I learned about the importance of being a good member of the family, being a good neighbor. So I started taking it upon myself to reach out to people, to try to maintain certain ties, to get together, to go out to eat. And by doing so, I would find myself in certain situations where I had to convey my beliefs to people. And there were certain things that I would not compromise. So for example, I've been in situations where I've said, let's go out and get some food together. However, I just want to make things clear that when it comes to alcohol, for religious reasons, I'm not going to sit at a table where people are drinking and serving alcohol. And I found myself in situations where people would agree to that, but then once we actually get there, they would test me. They would try to order, which put me in a situation where I was being tested. Am I going to just sit back and say, ah, you know what, go ahead, it's not really a big deal? Or am I going to actually say something and say, look, you know, all due respect, before we got together, you agreed that we wouldn't order any alcohol. Now you're ordering alcohol. And sometimes people, they might genuinely have forgotten. Some people might be trying to just go against what you asked of them because that's the type of person they are. Some people might literally just be trying to test you to say, oh yeah, I just wanted to see if you would let me or not. And this happened to me regarding many different things. Now I do want to emphasize that I think most people they just, they want to be respectful. They don't want any issues, but there definitely are people out there who will test you. So for example, when it comes to like saying Merry Christmas, there are definitely people out there who make it a point to say Merry Christmas and they want to hear you say Merry Christmas back to them. Now we shouldn't respond in a way that is rude or condescending or disrespectful, but there are many ways that we can respond respectfully without saying Merry Christmas. You can smile and say, have a good one. Enjoy your weekend. Take care. Have a great day. Those are all very nice, respectful things to say. And I would say the vast majority of the time, <laughs> that's sufficient. Nobody's going to give you a hard time. But if somebody does give you a hard time, if somebody is really testing you, then that means one of two things. One, they're disrespectful. They don't like you. They don't like your beliefs. In which case, they're even less deserving of you saying Merry Christmas to them. Or number two, it's an opportunity for you to actually have a conversation, to give da'wah. If they want to know why you don't celebrate Christmas, that's a great opportunity for you to explain Islam to them. And all of this is still in line with being respectful. So this is actually pretty basic, simple stuff, but the way I see it, a lot of Muslims needed to sort of hear this, just be reminded of it. As for new Muslims going to family gatherings for Christmas, I discussed that more in last year's video, which I'll put in the description if you want to check that out. In closing, I just want to say that I think a lot of the Muslims, we have to do a better job in the West of celebrating Eid. I think a lot of people who come into Islam, we notice that, you know, if we are to compare the way that Muslims in the West celebrate the two Eids, and we put those next to things like Christmas and birthdays and things that non-Muslims celebrate, there's a huge disparity. So I think we should just try to put some extra effort in celebrating the two Eids. We have two celebrations every year. We should do a better job of celebrating, of decorating, of giving out gifts, and make them from the most special times of the year that we're always looking forward to. That would also help a lot of us get over this desire to partake in celebrating non-Muslim holidays. Allah knows best. May Allah guide us, forgive us, and give us firmness in our deen. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I like how he ended with Allah knows best because only God knows best. Um, he spoke about how life is a test. 
nothing is going to be easy despite whatever religion you follow you're always going to be tempted there will be trials and tribulations throughout your journey like i said in whatever religion you follow and it's up to you to try your very best not to go astray another thing he spoke about was um he spoke about how uh christians i guess uh, celebrate um, Christmas. Funny thing is, uh, not not uh, not every Christian actually believes in this Christmas as the birth of, um, let me say, Jesus. Because some believe Jesus wasn't born on that day, and they only partake in Christmas because they want to give to others. Sometimes it's all about organizing these groups that are actually that are actually finding time to give um, to others. So it starts with, it has to start somewhere. If there's, if there's a certain group of Christians that say, uh-uh, Jesus wasn't born on this day, preach to the other ones, or anyone can actually tell them, I don't think Jesus was born on this day, but let's put this day to great use by actually giving to the people out there or giving, I don't know, it's just up to you and who you want to give to. The last, the last thing I want to comment about is the fact that he was actually Christian before he turned, he converted to Islam, so he knows what he's talking about. He's just not speaking for the sake of just speaking and putting out a, out a video, which is very, very amazing. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.